Hi, and welcome to week three of our session on leadership and administration, SSCI 4020U. It's really great to be back with you, and I trust you uh, enjoyed learning more about leadership and your own leadership capacity last week. This week, we're going to drill down on the idea of traits, behaviors, and relationships in leadership. And uh, as we said, this was really the foundational um, touchstone for leadership research in the 1930s and 40s with a researcher named Stogdill, Henry Stogdill, who came up with the great person approach and looked at the idea that there were certain traits that leaders possessed that would make them great leaders. Of course, we've moved beyond that idea now, but it's good for us to look at it and to know it. So our learning objectives for this week uh, as we move on is, first of all, just to remind you of our definition of leadership. I think that's really important. And so we say that leadership is an influence relationship among leaders and followers who intend real changes and outcomes that reflect their shared purposes. That idea again of intention, change, and shared purposes is pivotal to leadership. So for this week, number one, we want to outline some of the personal traits and characteristics that are associated with effective leaders. When you think about an effective leader, what traits or characteristics do you think of that those leaders might possess? We then want to help you identify your own traits that you can transform into strengths and bring to a leadership role as you graduate and emerge into leadership roles within your career. Strengths-based Tests uh, in your chapter will help you do this. I also have a website that you can go to uh, and there is a strengths-based uh, book that you can purchase if you'd like to know more about your own personal uh, strengths-based leadership uh, acuity. And then we want to distinguish among various roles that leaders play in organizations. Uh, and there really are three that we're going to look at. Um, the operational role, the collaborative role, and the advisory role. And which kind of careers fit each of those types of leadership role and which is exemplary of your strengths as a potential leader. Uh, we want to recognize autocratic versus democratic leadership behavior and the impact of each of these on leadership effectiveness. We also want to know the distinction between people-oriented behavior and task-oriented behavior and when we should be uh, applying or using each. Blake and Mouton developed their very famous managerial grid and uh, that of course looks at the idea of task and relationship and you'll see this as you progress uh, through your textbook that uh, this managerial grid helps you to think through high commitment to task or low commitment to task, low commitment to relationship and you'll work that through and so we'll look at this idea in leadership of task and relationship so pivotal to effective Leadership. We also want to understand how the theory of individualized leadership has broadened the understanding of relationships between leaders and followers and this idea that leadership is so much about relationship. We're then going to look at some key characteristics of entrepreneurial leaders, uh, which is very important in the 21st century. So what is a trait? A trait is the distinguishing personal characteristic of a leader, such as intelligence, honesty, self-confidence, and appearance. So a trait is the distinguishing personal characteristic of a leader. And we all know leaders who have certain distinguishing traits. We have what uh, has been titled by Henry Stogdall and researchers as the great man approach that has been updated now to be termed the great person approach because researchers have gone on to look at great leaders like Joan of Arc, um, and others who exemplified this trait approach to leadership in both uh, men and women uh, examples in history, male and female examples in history. Um, and so the great person approach is a leadership perspective that sought to identify the inherited traits leaders possessed that distinguished them from people who were not leaders. So what traits did these people who emerged as leaders in history, what did they possess that those who were not leaders did not possess? Of course, we realize now that that's a very simplistic perspective to have because we also need to take into account not only the leader, but also the context in which they lead and the followers 
And each of these then are determinants on leadership and leadership effectiveness. I often say to people that Nelson Mandela would not have emerged as the leader he was if he did not have the context of apartheid in which to act and the tremendous support of so many followers who supported him in that process. Even though he had some incredible leadership traits, he also needed the context and the followers to help surface and exemplify those traits. So when we think about some leader characteristics, what are some characteristics that we look for in leaders? Well, definitely energy. Uh, we follow people who are energetic, who are committed to the task. We also follow those who are passionate about the task. And, and leaders are people often who are very, very passionate about the shared purpose that they're embarking on with the followers. We look for humility in leaders. And as I mentioned in our former lecture, in our former session, Leadership hubris can be a tremendous uh, problem. Physical stamina and uh, how do you as a leader, as an emerging leader, build that physical stamina to endure the ups and the downs, the good and the bad that are so often a part of the leadership journey. We also look for intelligence and ability. Uh, leaders need generalized cognitive ability and also crystallized cognitive ability. People who are able to intuitively understand what is going on in the world and in the environment. And then people who are, apply themselves to deep learning to improve their leadership capacity. Knowledge. We trust leaders to make good decisions and to facilitate a good decision-making process. And to have knowledge about the organization and the context in which they're functioning. Judgment and decisiveness, optimism, cheerfulness. You can look at these uh, personality traits and say, yep, I see those in certain leaders in the world today. We also look at social characteristics. Uh, does the leader have social intelligence? Are they sociable? Um, do they have good interpersonal skills? Are they able to resolve conflict, to manage conflict, uh, and even sometimes to de-escalate conflict? Are they cooperative? Do they uh, inspire others to cooperate with them, and are they able to, to facilitate collaboration. And so you can look at each of these, think them through, and think about how they apply to your life, and maybe some that you would like to apply to your life. How are you going to develop those so that they become real traits uh, in your life as an emerging leader? And so we talk about some of these characteristics, as I've mentioned, and you can look those through. We don't need to drill down on them too much now. Uh, integrity is a big one today. We think of the SNC Lavalin case in which uh, SNC Lavalon executives uh, bribed officials in Bangladesh, bribed officials in Libya, and of course are dealing now with the fallout from that. Uh, a lack of integrity can undermine leadership effectiveness very quickly. Trust is pivotal to good leadership. Uh, Stephen Covey uh, wrote a book called The Speed of Trust, and there is much work being done on this idea of how to develop and sustain trust in leadership. I want to very quickly look with you at this idea of strengths-based leadership and the notion that strengths are vital to leadership. And so uh, when you think about strength, we need to define strength. It's a natural talent or ability that has been supported and reinforced with learned knowledge and skills. A natural talent or ability that has been supported and reinforced with learned knowledge and skills. A very famous uh, psychologist studied psychology in the 1990s, Seligman, and realized that most of the articles being published were on human dysfunction, uh, on human pathology, and he determined that he wanted to change that. And so he began to develop the realm of positive psychology. And out of that has come then this notion of strengths-based leadership, looking at what are the natural strengths that people possess and how can we leverage those for effective leadership. What strengths do you possess? And so I highlight this website, you'll be able to access it in the PowerPoints. You can go to the site and you can actually find your strengths in this Gallup poll. So a leader does not need all of the skills to handle every problem. A leader is not self-sufficient unto themselves. A leader though then learns how to work with others, to be interdependent and to hone their collaboration skills. Focusing on their strengths, leveraging their strengths, but then learning how to leverage, identify and leverage the strengths of others. That's good leadership. So there are three types then of leadership role. As you think about 
What are my strengths and where would I best fit? There's this idea of the operational role, which is germane to vertical management positions, such as a division president. There then is this idea of the collaborative role, and that's uh, definitely project management. And in the research, we highlight that project managers have to have a great level of ambidexterity because they have to lead and manage. They work with people voluntarily. They also have to manage budgets and staffing. And then there is this notion of the advisory role. Uh, these are leaders who provide guidance and support, and, and these are people who have tremendous strengths in the HR uh, domain. And then this idea of entrepreneurial leadership, and maybe you are someone who has strengths in the entrepreneurship domain. Uh, and so you're good at initiating a business venture, organizing the necessary resources, and assuming the associated risks and rewards, and not everybody has that capacity, but entrepreneurial leaders are really good at that. So there are four important characteristics of entrepreneurial leaders and the strengths of entrepreneurial leaders. Number one, they are able to uh, develop a vision, and they have tremendous dissatisfaction with the present. Entrepreneurs often come up with new ways to do things. Uh, they have ability to get people on board because they need to work with people to facilitate their idea. They have a flexibility and openness to feedback, and they learn quickly and they adapt quickly, and they have tremendous persistence and execution. So think about these things as you think about the traits that leaders possess, realizing that you can develop these traits, you can develop these strengths, you have some in, innate strengths and abilities, but there are also others that you can develop. And think about where you fit in terms of an operational role, advisory role, uh, collaborative role, or as an entrepreneurial leader. Enjoy your studies this week. Thank you.